Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to try and fix this PlayStation 2 Slim. So this was sent in to me by a viewer called Ash and he's also sent me some games as well. Controller power supply, the whole works. So this was his own one and then he tried to use it and it didn't display on the TV. He thought it might be just the AV lead, bought another one of them and it's still not displaying. So contacted me asking me would I like to look at it and I thought well yes I would because I haven't actually done anything to do with the PlayStation 2 Slim before apart from this one here which was in the Marcel's job lot and this from memory I think this was just I can't remember now I think it was just a switch at the back here I think it was to do with the lid not I think discs weren't working because the lid wasn't being recognized as closed if memory serves me right anyway there wasn't anything majorly wrong with it because I think it only took about 10 minutes to fix but this one here hopefully will be more interesting so it says here dear Vince here is a broken PS2 slim for some unknown reason it will not display any picture audio on any TV monitor I tried I've tried new cables and an upscaler with no luck. What makes this one interesting is on the odd reboot it will display and work fine in the settings menu. However, once a game boots it goes blank again. I hope you have fun with this. One many thanks, Ash. So big thanks, big thumbs up to Ash for sending this out to me. Some games here as well. So there's Freaky Flyers, Horseful Runner, True Crime, Streets of LA, and Guitar Hero 3, Legends of Rock. So yeah, I've just uh, plugged it in now and tried it and I can hear the disc moving and stuff like that and I can hear the fan, very quiet fan on this one and also look the no input signal or no signal thing goes off the TV but nothing actually displays and on the PS2 it is instant because if I use this working one, I'll show you now it will come on instantly but look when I open this up here you can see the disc is spinning so it looks like things are working it's just not displaying on the TV and it doesn't appear to be like a loose connection at the back I mean to be fair it does feel pretty loose but even when I plug the good one in here it still feels loose on this one as well. So let me just turn this one off by holding that down for a couple of seconds and watch this now. You see no signal on the TV there? And when I try it on this one here, it comes on straight away. Watch, it's like instant, look at that. So it doesn't take long at all to uh, fire itself up. What we're gonna try to fix today is uh, SCPH70003 and what's nice is look at the warranty sticker intact so nobody's been in this so I'm definitely going to be the first one in it which is nice so let's get this over to the blue mat take it apart and see if we can see anything obvious all my testing I think is going to be done around this port here to see if we can see what's going on with it and then hopefully well who knows let's take it apart it hasn't been taken apart before so it may be something really obvious or it might may be a nightmare now I've had a quick Google about a week ago on PS2 uh, black screen or no display and the little bit of research I did tend to suggest it was either a problem with the cable which we know it's not or the graphics chip now if it is the graphics chip then unfortunately this one will not be fixable Oh, here we go very very clean so I want to be concentrating around the AV out port here so I think I'm going to dismantle it further until I can get over there so let's see if we can get rid of this little metal cover here initial look around uh, the board and just on first inspections it looks perfect it looks really really nice so clean let's look on this side that would be just some flux left over from the uh, manufacturer so it all looks uh, it all looks good Now 
I can't see anything wrong with that. So now let's uh, let's just have a very close look in here. Let's zoom right in and make sure the pins look okay. Okay, so that's in there. There's a slight little uh, bit of white here. But that's not actually going to affect anything. That's not on the pins. The pins there look nice and clean. They're not snapped off or bent or anything. It doesn't look like there is any pins underneath. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So let's have a look. It looks like it goes through the board. So let's just spin it over and have a look at the other side here, see if there's any dry solder joints. Just giving it a wiggle. No, so I'm just wiggling it up and down here. And uh, I can't see anything. I can't see anything moving. Again, that, that would just be from the manufacturer, that's nothing. No, I don't believe that it's anything to do with the port or the solder joints here. So I suppose what I have to do now is start tracing back to see where these go to. I mean, to begin with, I don't even know what pin is responsible because it's just AV. So we're going to have two of the pins are going to be for audio. There's going to be a ground and then one of the pins is going to be for video. All we have to do is get the cable and then measure it from the cable back. So remember, right now, we're only going to be concentrating on the yellow one here, the video. And if you have a look at the pins here, you can see that we only have, we've got two at the top here that look like they're joined. So I'm presuming that those two ones, so the first one and the third one, are going to be ground. And then it's going to be like video, right and left audio. So all I have to do is go to continuity and go onto there. And let's see which one beeps and we know which one is our video. Okay, so it is that first one. That's the video, that one there. Now let's just double check which is the ground. So let's just go on to the outer one there. It's hard to do this one-handed. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go on both pins there, the middle and the uh, ground. So you can see the ground is, yeah, the ground is those two that are joined. And now the white one, which we don't really have to worry about yet, is that one there second one and red audio for right audio is going to be that one there and it looks like they're all going to be sharing the same same ground yeah they are been easier again I should have just done this to begin with let's just go on here and then find out which pin it is there that pin there. So now what I'm going to be doing is tracing along from here so it goes to here and then it's going to go through the board. And I need to find out where it comes where it comes up. So it looks like it comes up on this kind of weird little small chip here. Right, so I'm going to get my eye loop out and I'm going to see if I can trace it from this middle pin to see where it goes to. Okay, like always, it's hidden behind other things. But look, if I go onto the yellow one again here, you can see it's coming up in the middle of this one here. And then from there, it travels down through this capacitor. So there's a chance here that maybe the capacitor's causing the problems. This capacitor here says Y4... Two hundred and twenty four volts. Now I'm pretty sure I'm going to have two hundred and twenty. These are just electrolytic. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have two hundred and twenty microfarad ones, but they're not going to be four volt. But it doesn't matter, does it? Mine are probably going to be twenty five volt. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my ESR meter on it. I'm going to go to the negative side because you can see it's got a black the capacitor's got a black mark on one side. So that's going to be the negative side here. This side here. Right, okay, uh, so it's 2 ohms, uh, reference for 25 volt cap, where this isn't, this is just a 4 volt cap, good if capacitance is less than 47, you can't see that can you, 47, well this one's 220 I believe, I wonder whether this cap is the one that's faulty, 
Here we go. Well, look, at 25 volts at the bottom, the worst case scenario for a 220 is 0.32, and for a 10 volt is 0.6. So I suppose what's it going to be? About 1 ish or something? And it's 1.99. I mean, I'm just making it up there. It could be way more than that, but that's 1.99. I'm wondering if that's a dodgy cap or not. Uh, see, the problem with it, they're going to be hard for me to take out without ruining them. So ideally, I'd like to take that out. And then I could just, if I could take it out without ruining it, I could then get a reading off it. I'm just going to have a look, see if I've got actual electrolytic caps in the same design as that to make it easy for me to put back. Yeah, in this cheap Chinese set here, can you see I've got 220 here? But they are 16 volt, but that would be, uh, I'm sure that's going to be fine. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to change that one out. Problem is it could go through various other ones before that as well. I think I'm going to rip this one off to begin with and then see where it goes to before that. Maybe it then goes through another cap. Even if it's not the caps, which it probably isn't going to be. I mean, I could be lucky, but I kind of, I kind of need to take them out to trace where the wires go to because at the moment I don't know where it goes to after that. So I think I'm going to take this one out to begin with. I'm going to make a note of what it is. And then, well, actually, I don't need to because that next one there is 220 as well. That's 220, that's 220. So these are basically all 220 here. Uh, but I do need to make a note of which side is negative because they're not actually connected to the negative on the board. Because if you have a look here, I've got my meter on continuity. And have a look here and here. Can you see that these are connected? But listen here. Can you see they're not connected to the caps? So these caps are not being connected to ground, they're in line. So they must be just to block DC signals and just allowing the AC through, I presume, for the, uh, the uh, video and left and right, left and right audio. Should I do that or should I, should I uh, keep trying to trace after that? I think I should do that because I can. They're not going to be a nightmare to replace. So uh, let me. Do you know what I'm going to do? What I've seen in other videos, and people swear by this, but I know when I do it, I'm probably going to get a load of grief for it. But even if I do break the pads, I'm pretty sure I will be able to fix it up again. So if you're going to be offended by this, just turn away. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to twist this left and right to break this off. There we go. That actually came off very easy. I'm just going to have a close look again, see where this goes to. This is the capacitor we just took off. It goes through this green item here, which I'm not sure what it is. And then it goes to this little wire here. Now look, annoyingly, when I lift it up a little bit, what do you notice? Can you see that these ones here are see-through? You can see my blue mat underneath it, but not this one. And that's because that via goes in to the underneath of this chip here. So I've put a continuity test just on the, the via on the other side, and I've gone across the pins here and here and here, and it doesn't appear to be coming off, but it's kind of hard because the via is so small and it's obstructed. But I don't think it's coming up here, so who knows where that's going to? It could be going along a little bit and then back through another hole to another part of the board on the other side, or maybe it's coming out and going to somewhere else. So I think before I get too involved with that, I think I'm just going to pop a new capacitor on here and let's see then if the, uh, let's put it back on a TV and see what happens. Remember as well, I'm worried about the fact there's no, no audio. Now I've just put a quick tone down each of the right and left audios and they're coming across on these ones here. Now the chip is missing here, but one of the audios is going to the middle pin here, one's going to the middle pin here, and then they both go through these uh, capacitors here. But again, would all the capacitors fail? Mm, I think it's uh, I think it's unlikely to all fail at the uh, round about the same time, you know? And then they go through, where do they go now? One's here, and one goes underneath the chip here, but the one underneath the chip here appears to be coming up here. So it looks like we've got one audio coming through here and one audio coming through here. So at least this side here is then traceable, kind of weaves this way all the way around, way around here. So uh, I'm not going to worry about that yet. Let's just pop a capacitor in here just in case it is something as simple as that.
also need to look into because there's loads of pins here. Maybe it also does RGB out. I've uh, I've only ever used my one on AV, but maybe this does RGB out as well. So maybe that's what all the other capacitors and the pins are for. So uh, this will kind of prove whether it's just capacitor related or not, won't it? And if not, I'm then going to have to trace it further into the board. Let's get this back on the TV, see if we have any luck. And now let's see if no signal goes off. Yes, it does. OK, so we're in the same position as we were before. Right, do you know what I'm thinking now? I mentioned RGB earlier, and I'm pretty sure when I was looking up videos before, one of the issues could be, if this was last on RGB, I need to double check this now, if that was last on RGB, then I'm not sure if it displays or not when it's on AV. So it could be just a setting issue. I tried it on my one, and it doesn't make a difference whether it's on the RGB or the other one, you know, the Y. PR whatever it is so uh, let's but but I have written down what the combination is on the internet so let's turn it on so look there it should be here should be up by now so let's try it here let's go uh, down X down 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 X left X and of course nothing's happened in this instance here. So I think that's maybe if you're dealing with like a HDMI output or something like that, you know, the, the little adapters that you can buy. So it's definitely not that. Do you know what I'm wondering? What I'm wondering is, could it be something to those tantalum capacitors underneath the graphics chip? So I'm presuming out of the two of these that the bigger one is the CPU and this one is the graphics chip. I'm wondering, there's a load of tantalum capacitors underneath the graphics chip. And we know on the PlayStation 3 that the errors where it's not displaying on the TV is caused a lot by the tantalum capacitors. I wonder whether it could be that they've gone faulty. So what I'm thinking about doing is I might just try heating them up just to see if it was to come to life. If it was to come to life, then I could order up some tantalum capacitors. Uh, I could even try changing them for electrolytic because I did manage to get a PS3 working just using electrolytic capacitors. So if they failed and they're not providing enough power to the GPU, that's if that one there is a GPU, maybe I should double check that first before I do anything with the capacitors. I suppose that would be the clever thing to do. Yeah, but apart from that, do you know, I don't really know what else to do on this board because it looks okay and I'm already struggling to follow the tracks because they go under that uh, little chip. The only other thing I could possibly do is I've got a lead here. I could break down this lead and connect it up to my speaker and maybe I could see if I could get power before these capacitors here. Do you know what, I'm just gonna turn this off now because I can feel that the uh, CPU is getting very warm because I haven't got a heat sink on it and I don't, don't wanna do any other damage. So maybe I could see if I can get audio out of here. But the very fact there's no picture or audio makes me think it's not, makes me think that the audio is not gonna work there. I don't believe this is capacitor related as far as the components here. But that's another avenue I could look at. Looked up and that is definitely the graphics chip there. So I'm starting to suspect these tantalum capacitors. Uh, I've had a look, you can also get RGB cables for this one as well. But the very fact it's not doing audio, because even with RGB it's still going to be using the audio from the uh, from the composite. So I don't think it's anything to do with the capacitors or anything around this area because we haven't got audio either. I'm thinking it's something to do with the graphics chip. What is worrying me is where is this trace going? So it goes under here, but there's nothing coming out of here. You know, I've put the, the, the tone on it and I can't find it on any of these pins here. So then I'm wondering if it's just going for a small little bit and then going back through the board again. But I've put my tone on, that little wire in there, and I've gone across everything that I can see here and it's not coming up. So, uh, Already I'm starting to lose the battle here a bit. I mean, I could possibly take this one off here. It's going to be a bit of a tricky one to get back on because the pins are very close together. But it seems a shame to take it off just to check the via on the other side. But I don't really know what else to do. I think to begin with, this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I might just 
Uh, I'll tell you what, let me just check these for shorts, just just on a very slim chance that uh, that they are measuring a short. No, they're not. Interestingly, though, they're all coming up with this, roughly the same amount of... Uh, Remember, I'm just on resistance here, and these are capacitors. Well, I think they are anyway. They're all coming up as 130, over 100 ohms, 137, 112, 112. So these two are the same, and these two are the same. They're coming up with the same readings as far as the resistance is concerned. But then again, does that actually mean anything? Uh, I'm only thinking about them purely because of the PlayStation 3, that's all. Right, this is what I'm going to do, because... I'm kind of fighting it here and also I can't trace them because of this big chip here and the graphics chip is very close to here so really would it be going all the way over over here somewhere to be coming back to here again so maybe it does just go I don't know through here straight into one of these vias or something I'm not too uh, not too sure I don't think there's a multi-layer board though so I should be able to find out I'm thinking this is just top and bottom right this is what I'm going to do I am going to heat up these just to see if it makes any difference. Because remember with the PlayStation 3, everybody said if you heat it up, you're reflowing it, but really all you're doing is you were heating up the uh, tantalum capacitor. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to add heat to each of these and then see if it even attempts to turn on. And then if it does, maybe then it suggests that the tantalum capacitor is a 40. If not, maybe I might take off this chip so I can trace that video signal to see what chip it goes to. I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm not going to use any flux on here. I'm literally just going to I'm just going to heat them up for a bit. I'm not obviously doing this to repair it. I'm doing this just to try to prove whether these could be faulty or not. Right, okay, yeah, they're definitely uh, nice and warm now. So let's put it back on the TV while these are warm and see if anything happens. Right, okay, so it's on AV. So let's, uh, so there's no signal. Let's turn it on here. Let's see if it does anything different this time. No. Mm, I can still feel that's really warm now. That's really warm, so. Hmm. Oh, I don't know what to do. This one's already beaten me. So the no signal goes off, so it's definitely got a partial signal. Tell you what, let's unplug the audio just for some reason if it's going to make any difference at all. Yes! Ah, so I unplugged the audio and it's come to life. Is that a coincidence? <laughs> oh, well, now, is that a coincidence or is that just one of those times where it's turned on? So let's plug the audio back in and let's see. Hold on, is it going to go? All right, let's turn it off and on again with the audio plugged in. That might be just pure coincidence. Right, so it hasn't come on that time yet. Now let's unplug the audio again. And now let's try it. Ah, I think it was just coincidence. Hmm. Okay, that's the first time I've got it to turn on, but remember Ash did say that occasionally it does turn on. So what is that about now? Uh, hmm. I'm really not sure what to do on this one. Uh, I think I'm going to take off that chip and have a look underneath it because that's not a BGA chip, and at least then I can I can trace where the I can trace the roots, can't I, off that video output, 
and then that will give me a better idea of where it ends up. Maybe it does just go straight into here. If it does, then I know I'm not going to be able to fix it unless I mess around with those tantalum capacitors. There's nothing else that can be done. That's a BGA chip. Uh, I don't even know, maybe it's married to the board, I'm not too sure, but even if it's not married to the board, I'm not going to be able to replace that chip there. So, I think it leaves me no choice apart from to remove that chip. If I'm careful, I should be able to hopefully get that back on again. I'm hoping. Let's give it one last go. No, nothing's happening there. Well, okay, let's get the chip off and trace those, uh, trace that via on the other side. The chip I'm going to be removing, the least amount of components of this side here, so I'm going to try to heat it up. I'm going to try to just lift it underneath this side here. Let's get some flux around it. It's such a shame to have to remove this because I don't believe this has anything to do with the fault. And obviously I risk, when I do this, I risk something like messing up one of the pads or even burning the chip. It's just, uh, I just cannot find that... Uh, I cannot find where that via goes to and apart from that and taking off these tantalums I'm sort of lost as what else to do. Well, I've got my airflow 5 out of 8 temperature 480 degrees Celsius by the way that uh, looks like a fuse there it says F0001 and uh, I've checked that one and uh, that there is continuity across that Well, I'm going to let it cool and then at least now I'll be able to see where the wire goes to. Weird thing is, just initially now it's going to be, I presume, this one or this one. And they just look like they're going to the pins there, but I didn't, I didn't have any continuity there. I hope my meter leads weren't too big for that wire now. That would be annoying. <laughs> oh. Okay, let me let, let it cool down and then I'll have a, a closer look. So it is this little one here which just goes to here. So why why wasn't I here in that when I was running my fingers, my probes up and down there? Well, that's annoying, isn't it? So it just goes to there. Which says that that chip must be something to do with the the audio-visual. Uh, that's annoying. Right, let's go right the way from the green capacitor all the way over here now. Why couldn't I hear that before? So there was no need to take the chip off, that's annoying. Okay, but that says to me that that's not going anywhere else, look. That isn't going anywhere else, so that video signal is coming from this chip isn't it because from the here it doesn't go to any other point so it starts at the chip i wonder if i was to type that chip name into google would it come up with anything sony cxm 4015r well this little chip here the one that i took off is a specialized sony chip so there's no data sheet on it but it is the video signal processing chip Hmm, so does that mean that that chip is faulty? I've had a look on eBay, they're not for sale, but yet they're, well, there is a seller in China selling two of them for 20-something pounds, but they're gonna, they would take quite a long time to arrive. Uh, also, that's quite a bit of money, really, for, uh, well, I suppose there is two of them, though. But I don't actually know if it's them that's faulty or not. So, don't know what to do on this one now. I think I'm going to take apart my working one and have a look. Have a look at that one, see if the same chip is on that one. Maybe I can get some voltage readings around the place. Not really, not really sure. See, it could be as simple as that this chip is faulty. I don't know, but when I typed in this chip online a lot of people it wasn't kind of common it wasn't saying yeah this is definitely faulty people were just having this to show where the different uh, you know where you could do different 
uh, mods for the video out, I think it was. You know, if you want like VGA or something like that. Uh, so yeah, I'm not, I'm a slight bit of a loss at the moment. I think I'm going to take a part of the working one, just to see. It might be a completely different board. It might be a completely different layout with where everything is different. But maybe if I can, I know that that one's working, so maybe I can get some voltage readings on that one and compare to this one. And then it might suggest that this chip is faulty. For example, if I can find out the, the pin feed in this chip, then... If this is getting, if this is not getting voltage and the, it is on the other one, then I know that maybe something feeding this, a voltage regulator or something, might be faulty. So um, yeah, I'm going to take apart the other one and see if I can find anything interesting on this one here because this one has already been apart. This is the working board here. Interestingly, there's a big thermal pad, but it's not on this one. Luckily, though, it looks to be. Oh no, look, it's not the same layout, is it? Chips down here are different. Can you see around this area? They're different here, aren't they? There's an extra chip here, I think. But as far as the video out is concerned, all up here, that looks to be the same. And on this side of the board, can you see that chip is here as well? And that is the same chip, the CM4015R. So that's the same there. And these uh, tantalum capacitors look different as well. That's interesting. They look different as well. Hmm. Okay, well, you know what I'm thinking, don't you? I'd be tempted to swap a few things over to see if we can get it livened up. I think before I do that, maybe I'm gonna to try to measure some voltages around the place. difference on this tiny little chip here so let me zoom in to show you the chip I'm talking about see this one here and this is near to this chip here now remember the differences could be because I've uh, I've taken out that video processing chip but they're all testing the same all the way around here apart from this top right hand one let me zoom in and show you that zoom out I mean. so watch this you see here you just go, for example, just across the bottom one here, and you can see it's coming up as 1.67, and if I go here, it's coming up as 1.67. But now, if I go to this top one here, I'm not getting any reading on this one, and on this one, I am getting a reading. Yeah? So I wonder, could it be as simple as that chip there, which is, uh, which is faulty? So I think what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to place don't know whether to just try to swap that chip over or not or whether I should place the chip back on here and then measure this one again because if I place that back on successfully and measure this one then I might find that I've got voltage here in which case I can do further further testing but by swapping that chip to here then you see that could solve the problem don't know oh it's a toughie I'm not sure what to do but that's one difference I've definitely found just going to turn this off now so it doesn't overheat. See so what I'm going to do before doing that, I'm going to trace where that actual leg goes to. And that might give me an idea, because it might be something before that, that's not sending the voltage to that, if that's the input pin. Right, so I've traced them, and they go from here. These three top ones here go to these three here. But look, I go to the other side here, they come up here. These ones here, they don't do anything. They don't go anywhere, and they're not attached to that massive ground rail or power rail. Or, well, that's going to be a ground, isn't it? Let's just double check that one. Yeah, so they're not attached to that massive ground. So I think they might be just there as little test points. These three here, they don't go anywhere. So I think, I think I'm going to be wasting my time swapping that chip over. Uh, not quite sure why I've got nothing on this one and something on this one probably because I'm missing the video chip do you know what I'm going to do I am going to replace the video chip from here I I don't know what to test there's nothing online to guide me obviously I, well I, I'm assuming there's no schematics online 
I'm going to take the video processing chip off here, put it on here, because that's what I think is faulty. If it turns out it's not faulty, then maybe I can think about changing the tantalum capacitors or maybe some of these uh, voltage regulator chips or whatever these are here. I, I don't know how else to fault find this one apart from just swapping that chip over because the voltages I've measured so far have been the same. So I'm... Uh, I'm thinking maybe it could be this. Let's swap it over and see what happens. It is the same chip in the same orientation. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Now when I take this off, I'm actually going to put the faulty, suspected faulty chip back on here, and then put the good chip on my faulty board and then you see I can try both of them and we'll know then 100% as long as I've put it on correctly whether uh, whether the chip is faulty or not. I'm just going to zoom right in for this bit now so I can see it go back on. Right, I don't know if that's... Uh, I don't know if that's on or not. I'm going to take the heat off, I'm just going to get my head in the way and have a real close look with the eye loop. Nope, not happy with that, it's all bridged over, not bridged, but the pins are all uh, wrong over this side. Just going to look at that again. Amazingly, that looks okay. Look. Oops, hold on. Can you see? They all appear to be on the pads. Right now, I'm going to do the same with the. Uh, what was this? This was my. Uh, this was the faulty chip I put on here, or the suspected faulty chip. So now I'm going to put the good chip on the suspected faulty board. And let's see what happens with that and then I can clean them both up using IPA. Okay, so this is the good board with the suspected faulty chip and I'm actually happy with how that one's gone on. So it all appears to be on the pads. Need to give it more for clean up. So that's uh, yeah, that's uh, that's good. This one, I'll be honest with you, I'm not very happy with. In hindsight, I'm thinking maybe putting on with solder, solder and iron might have been easier. So that side looks okay, and that side, but these are just all ever so slightly out. But I think, I think they're okay. It's just they're all just a fraction of a millimeter shoved this way. But I still think I don't think they're shorting to the next ones. It's just a little bit hard to tell. Anyway, let's try them both out now on the TV and see what's happening. Okay, so this is the good board with the suspected bad chip. So I want to see, so this basically is the working one. I want to see if it's still working now. I hope I haven't mucked up both of them because I had heat on that chip for a long time. Okay, now I'm worried. No, I'm very worried. So nothing's happening on the TV there, is it? It's not even coming up with no signal. Oh, I've got a feeling I might have now mucked up both the PlayStations. Right, okay, well, let's see. So this was the one that's working, which is not working now. It's doing something different than before because it's not getting rid of the no signal. Oh, it's not good, not good at all. Now let's see the faulty board. OK, 
Okay, see if this does anything now. It's gone off. But nothing's happening. Ah, so that says to me it's not the chip. So this is doing the same as it did before. Uh, right, I need to have a close look at my good board. So it's not... Well, is it the chip or it's not the chip? I mean, if my good board was working with the other chip, then we know 100% it's not the chip. But, right now, I'm not 100% sure, because this is doing exactly the same as it was before. Which makes me think that it's not the chip. Right, I'm going to mess around with the solder on the good board. I'm just going to really look closely, look at each of the joints to see, to see what they're like. I'm hoping it's just going to be a solder bridge or something, rather than rather than me having burnt the chip. Yeah, so this is doing the same as it same as it was before. Right, luckily I found some loose pins on well I found one loose pin and as soon as I found that I got the solder nine set up. So I'm gonna this time do it underneath the microscope. So let's uh, zoom into the microscope so you can see what I see. So it's the second pin there that's actually loose. So I've just put flux everywhere and uh, I'm just going to heat each of them up and hopefully they will reflow. Above the center of attention, but I'm not. I wish I didn't have to give in to the pressure. Uh oh. Mm. I'm posting pictures, trying to be someone I'm not. It feels just like I'm lying to you. I fake it, stage it, trying to live some perfect life. I know I'm wasting time. Cause I just wanna call my friends and see what they're doing tonight It doesn't have to be so special I try to be myself, you do the same and we'll be alright Hopefully, that might be okay. So I'm going to clean them up now and have a good close look. Right, I've had a good close look at that now. And to me, all the legs look to be in the right place. And also, they look like they have a nice bit of solder on each of them as well. So let's give it a go now and see if we have more success with this one. Right, here we go. Let's see now if it's going to display. 
Fingers crossed. It's gone off there. Brilliant, excellent. Oh God, I, yeah, there's nothing worse than trying to fix something else and then breaking, breaking a working thing. Right, so that says to me 100% that that chip is not at fault. So although it was a risky thing to do, it's probably actually saved me a lot of time. So the chip is not at fault. So what is at fault? Should we have a look at the tantalum capacitors next? Right, here goes, let's see what's happening with these ones now. So which one should I try first? Let's try the original 40 one. Okay, so this is Ash's one. I'm on there now, let's turn it on. It goes off, is anything gonna happen? No, it's not, so it's not the tantalum capacitors. Oh. That's all my theory gone out the window then. Right, okay, I'm hoping now that my one's still gonna work. So let's unplug that one there. I wonder, could it be the GPU? Right, plug in this. I'm hoping this is still gonna work now. Yay, it is. Okay, so it's not the tantalum capacitors. What else could it be? I'm kind of running out of options now. I think it's not even worth changing that one because voltage was the same on that. Uh, I suppose I could do that little chip on the back side, you know, on, underneath where one of the pins was reading different. I suppose I could swap that over, see if that makes any difference or not. But uh, I think this is going to be close now to uh, a failure video. See, the thing is, if it's the GPU, there's really nothing I could do about that. I suppose I could try to reflow it by putting flux all the way around it, putting a serious amount of heat on top. The only problem with that is, if I release the video and then somebody says, oh, I, I had that loads, I used to fix these back in the day and it always turns out to be this chip here or this capacitor or something, then I would be disappointed that I ruined it via, via messing around with the uh, GPU. So I think I would rather do that as the last resort. Right, let's uh, have another look at this board. A huge amount more I can really do. So I think I'm just going to change these two chips over here and uh, probably call it a day after that because I think I'm going to need help on this one. Right, so this is the 40 board. Let's see if that's made any difference to it. And the answer is no. I think I have run out of options. Turn it fully off. Swap quite a few chips over now. Exactly the same as it was before. Right, let's try the original original good board and see if that makes any difference. Yes, it is. So everything I've swapped over so far, it hasn't been. I mean, the good news is I haven't affected my one, so it looks like my one's still working consistently every single time, which is uh, which is good. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm stopping for today. And I'm just going to I'm going to scour the internet and hope that somewhere in some language in some country that somebody may have the answer. I use Google Translate. This is the 41, and I just kept turning it on and off, on and off, on and off, loads of times until it worked, and it is is working right now. And look, the weird thing is it's staying on. Obviously, I can't try a disc because it's uh, it's it's not in there, but. Let's, uh, I've gone to the system configuration and what I've done is I've changed the component out 
to that one rather than the RGB. So I just want to see if that makes any difference. I'm sure it's not going to make any difference, but let's just see now whether that's going to make any difference or not. No, it's not. So and that's so weird. So when it's working, it seems to stay on, but the problem is, is getting it working. It seems to only do it maybe one in 20 times. The weird thing is, though, you think that when it's on, it would you think it would kick out again after a few seconds, but it just seems to be on permanently. It's really strange, isn't it? Yeah, so I've seen it work a couple of times now. I wonder is it low voltage somewhere and just every now and then it, uh, it spikes up and starts working. But again, you think then it would stop working when it's, uh, when it's on the screen, but there it stayed on for a good minute or so. Well, it stayed on until I turned it off. Okay, well, look, I'll uh, I'll read up on it, and then I'll come back to it tomorrow. So it's definitely not setting related, is it? But remember, Ash did say that even when it works, when you try to play a game, it doesn't load up the game. So again, would that suggest a voltage problem? Because then when it's spinning up the disc, it's going to use extra voltage. I wonder whether the main first chip that provides the voltage in here, I wonder whether that's faulty. Maybe I should look at that next. OK, I'm going to do more research on it. See you tomorrow. So it's the next day now, and I've found very little information online. I couldn't find any YouTube videos on this exact problem on the PlayStation 2 Slim. Quite a few on the actual PlayStation 2, but not the Slim. And uh, not a huge amount of information online either. But the good news is, good and bad news, good news is there is schematics available, which is amazing. I didn't think they would be. Not for the exact board here, but very similar, and you can pick out most of the, most, not all, most of the chips. So hopefully, if I could find something wrong, I might be able to look at the schematics and work back from there. Uh, the bad news is, there's pages and pages and pages of it. It's on a PDF, it's quite hard to move around, and you have to keep zooming in, and then when you zoom in, it's... It's just a bit awkward, you know what it's like when it's all blurry and you have to zoom in and then when you zoom in, you zoom in so close you can't miss the bigger picture. So, uh, but if I can find some difference between the boards, then I can definitely look at the schematics and find out what's what. For example, a quick look last night, I now know that this chip here is to do with power and I know that this little chip here is to do with power as well. I'm thinking now it might be a power problem and that's why when Ash tried putting a disc in, it wouldn't, it went to a black screen again because maybe only one in 40 goes does it have enough power to actually turn on the screen and then if you were to need a little bit more power maybe that's enough to take the power away from the screen this is just my thinking again i could be completely wrong so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to just do different readings again between the board because i only went across a few chips yesterday i'm going to go across pretty much well, I don't know, I might go across loads and loads. I might go across all different capacitors or something. Maybe I might be able to see something different in between the two. If I can't, then I suppose I've got to suspect that it's probably the GPU which is faulty, and then I'll have to give up. But I'm not giving up yet, because maybe one of these chips to do with the power is faulty. And that might be uh, that might be causing it. It might well be a power issue. So I can't leave these plugged in all the time because they're going to overheat. So I'm going to be plugging them in, testing the chip, unplugging them, letting them cool around a bit. Plug it back in again, test another chip, and then unplug it, let it cool again. So it's going to take me a long, long time to do. I'm not going to film it because it's pointless. I'll only start filming when I find something wrong. So all I'm going to be doing is going between a ground and the different legs of the chip, reading the voltages, and then going on this one, reading the different legs of the chip and uh, comparing them like so. So I'll get back to this when I've hopefully found something that looks different. 
Okay, it's been quite a while later and uh, I'm this close now to giving up. So what I've done is I've actually found another board, the exact same board. This was one that has a disc reading problem. So I haven't yet done the trying to fix video on this. But what I've done is I've removed the chips because the other board didn't have exactly the same size chips when it came to the power ones down here. So what I did is I swapped over this one here, which is definitely to do with power. I swapped over this one here, which is definitely to do with power. And I swapped over this one here, just because it was near the power. Haven't got a clue what this one is for. And again, it hasn't made any difference. It's worked twice, but then it doesn't work 20 times. So what am I gonna do now? I don't know what else to do. I'm suspecting now that it's the GPU. But there was something on YouTube saying that it's the CPU that actually makes the signal and it puts it through to here, the video signal, puts it through to the GPU, which then processes, processes it, which then puts it onto, I think it's this chip here, which then goes onto here. So it could be a CPU problem for all I know. The weird thing is, when I hold these down, it doesn't appear to make a difference. So I don't think that is actually to do with the fact that the balls have come away from the board because I've been putting quite a bit of pressure down and turning them on and off and it hasn't made a difference. So I'm wondering if it is an actual problem with the chip itself, not the solder balls underneath it. So there's gonna be one last thing that I'm gonna do before I call it a day. Uh, and also I don't think, I don't think I am gonna reflow it because I don't believe it's the balls that are the problem. If it's the chip that's the problem, reflowing it is not gonna work. Yes, I might get a, a picture for a week or something, but it's not gonna make any real difference, is it? It's just gonna fail again. So I am gonna change these capacitors around this power because this is definitely power down here. I'm gonna change these capacitors here with an electrolytic through hole. I'm just gonna sort of balance them on the board and see if that makes any difference or not. Okay, so I changed these over to electrolytic, and guess what? It's still not working. Ah, okay, it's time for me to give up on this. I've spent far too long on it, and I'm just going around in circles. I, no matter what I do, it's not making any difference. There's no point in changing these over, because remember, I've traced the signal, and it only goes through one capacitor, which I have changed. Then it goes into the chip. So uh, the others are gonna be for RGB and stuff like that. Yes, I could try and get RGB working, but think about it, what's the point? It's gonna be using audio from here. So the RGB is only for the, only for the picture, and remember we haven't got audio either. So I don't believe it's anything to do with an RGB problem either. So I, even if I was to get an RGB lead, it's still not gonna work, I'm sure of that, because the audio itself is not working. Then when it decides to work, the audio and the picture's working perfectly. So uh, what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna reflow the GPU just for the sake of ending the video. I'm sure it's not gonna make any difference at all, but I'm doing that. And then if that makes no difference, I'm then gonna do the CPU, and then I'm just gonna be keeping this board for spares. I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna need a laser for this one here. This is gonna be a video because uh, I bought this off eBay. The, 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 that's not playing discs apparently. So I might even be able to use the laser from here in there, in which case then it hasn't gone to waste. Uh, I don't think there's anything else I can do. What am I going to do? Try to replace every single chip? I think... I think I'm wasting, I think I'm wasting my time. Because that's going to take me way over a day to do all that. And uh, the chances are then I'm just risking damaging this board here, which I know is working. It's just a laser problem. And right now I'm thinking it is going to be a GPU or a CPU problem, in which case it can't be fixed anyway. So what I've done here is I've just put a load of flux around the edge and I'm just heating up all the way around the edge. And then I'll uh, hopefully do it until it reflows. Looks like it's already starting to lift on this side here. Oh yeah, there we go, it's reflowed, I didn't realize that, okay. Let's try to get it back into position. I 
Right, so that's in position there. Yep. So now let that cool. I'm going to let that cool for about 10 minutes or so. Now the very act there of uh, the fact that it moves about a few millimetres, it probably means that the solder balls beneath that have now uh, shorted it together. See, if I, if I knew it was just a re-balling problem, for example, if I was going to press that down and for it to work, I would try to re-ball that because I did buy some stencils from China a while ago now with some solder balls as well. And on this chip, the balls actually look quite big because when you're dealing with things like the Nintendo Switch, the balls are tiny and things like the latest phones. But on this, the balls do look quite big. But even when I put force down there, it's not working. So I don't believe it's the fact that there's a dry solder joint. I'm wondering whether it's the chip itself. Anyway, I'm going to let that cool, see if it works, and then I think I'll try to do the same on this uh, CPU as well. Okay, so it's cooled down now. I plugged it in, and it's going red light, green light, straight back to red light. And if you have a look, can you see that there's bridged pins in here? See the balls? Those ones there are bridged and I think maybe those ones and also up here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off completely and then uh, let's have a look at the uh, let's have a look at the balls underneath it because right now it's not working whatsoever. Okay, so that's it off. You know what? The balls are well. The balls are tiny, but they're actually quite big compared to modern chips. So I think what I'm going to do is, I think I am going to get a big tip on my solder line. I think I'm going to remove all the balls from here. Let's try to just reball it. I've never done it before, but uh, yeah, why not? Why not? I've got nothing to lose. It doesn't work anyway. I've spent long enough on it. I've spent longer than what most people would do on it. So uh, I don't feel bad using this for practice now. I'm just going to clean up all the balls now using some solder braid. They're all off there, so now I need to get them off the actual chip itself. That's clean there now as well. So let's give everything a good clean with IPA. Right, so you can see it there. 
It's all cleaned up quite nice, isn't it? Now let's do the board. And the board itself looks okay. The reason it looks weird in some places is just that there's loads of holes going through to the other side of the board and some of those holes have got blocked now with solder when I was doing the solder braid. But that's not going to matter, I don't think. Right, so now what I need to do is I need to find my uh, little stencil kit that I got from China and let's see if there's balls and stencils the same size as that. So I'm not going to put it on the board, I'm going to put it on the chip and then uh, try to reflow it back on. As I say, all this is kind of pointless because if the chip's faulty, reballing it isn't going to do anything at all. It's just, uh, I'm really doing this now just because I've never done it before and it's a bit of curiosity. Okay, so welcome to my cheapy Chinese reballing kit. I bought this probably about a year ago now and I've only just unpacked it to look at it and it went straight back in again. And I also bought some separate stencils from uh, from China, but I remember when I was trying to look in, when I looked into maybe reboarding, there was a tiny little chip on the switch light or on the switch. I can't remember. And basically, even though these all look minuscule, they were still all way too big. But the balls here are actually pretty big. So I've gone through the different stencils here, and I've just been trying to line them up. So obviously, when it comes to something like this, you can see that the balls here are way bigger than here. But look at this one here, this is 0.76, and I presume that means pitch off 1.27 millimeters. And look, if I line this one up, hold on, let me just uh, line it up here at the corner. There, can you see? It kind of fills all the holes, doesn't it? Look at that. You can actually see the outline of it. So I think that this is the correct one to use, yeah? Do you know what I mean? Because look there, you can see it's, uh, I don't know, it just looks, just looks right. So let's undo these Allen keys here. I'm presuming this is where you pour the balls and they all fit in here. And I'm thinking the balls have to be just ever so slightly smaller than 0.76 millimeters. Look, you see, they look like they've all lined up. Right, so now let's look in this bag and see, because this is the bag we got with it, let's see if we've got some balls that are point, what's this, point 0.7, point 0.76 or something, wasn't it? How do I know the size of the balls? Oh, there you go, it's 0 0.5, so we've got 0 0.5 there. 0.76, so they must be the ones we use for that. Right, let's try them, see if they go in. Well, I'm quite excited. I've got a feeling this is going to be quite therapeutic pouring these balls in. So look here, 0.76, so let's see what happens now. So obviously I don't want them everywhere, I only want them on these bits here, so I'm going to have to... How am I going to do that? Because I can't mask those bits off. Ooh. Oh, I like that. Oh, I like that a lot. Well, I think I've found a secret way to do it. So you put a lot of force on it down here and then put loads of balls on and just keep wiggling it around. And as you can see, they're all starting. The excess ones are just all falling away. And the ones that are remaining are going to be there. Now, obviously, remember, there's a pattern on this one here. So... Uh, there's going to be loads of balls that I've wasted, but I can't see any other way of doing it where it doesn't take three hours. Yeah, so you can see I was a bit vicious there, and a lot of the balls came out. So now I'm going to put more on the top one there, but I think I'm nearly there. Now what I should have done is I should have done this over a container to make it nice and easy to put the balls back into here again. Okay, so they're definitely all in their place now. Obviously there's loads that don't need to be there, but uh, at least this way they're all in their place. So I'm going to uh, put the air right down and I'm just going to 
start off in big circles. Trying to heat up the whole thing evenly. Right, so it looks like they're all melted. Not sure if I should take it off now or just leave it. Maybe I'll leave it till it goes cold. Bingo, excellent. Well, a few balls have been left behind on here. Hopefully they're not gonna be of any importance. Right, from here it looks pretty good. I'm just going to have a close look at it up, up close now, make sure that nothing's stuck where it shouldn't be stuck. Wow, look at that. That is pretty good. I'm happy with that. So the only ones I'm unsure about is there's this one here where it's kind of gone to a bit of a peak, but it is still there, so I'm hoping that will make a connection. This one here has moved over a little bit, but hopefully when I put it down on the board it will pull itself into the middle. And this one's moved over, but hopefully that will put it into the middle. So, uh, yeah, look at that. Not bad. Right, let me tidy up now and let's try and get this back on the board. Right, let's try and get this back on. So I'm going to put a load of flux down on the board. And let's place this roughly in the correct position. I think that's in the correct position. Now let's heat it up and see if it goes on or not. Right, that has melted. So I'm just going to give it another 30 seconds. Make sure the middle's all melted. Maybe not 30 seconds. Right, I'm gonna leave it at that now. And I'm not gonna go near it. And hopefully, it'd be amazing if they did stick. I'm, uh, I'm pretty certain it's not gonna make any difference to the outcome, but it would be nice just to see if it would try to turn on again. At least then, it means that maybe that re-ball was successful. So I'm going to let this cool and then we'll test it out. Right, okay, if you have a look in there now, can you see that they all appear to be, well, I say all, that row there appear to be okay. They look quite nice actually, it looks quite level, doesn't it? I'm not sure if the chips warped a little bit, I'm not sure if it's a little bit banana here. Well, let's give it a go. It was broken before, so it's still probably going to be broken now. 
Right, here it goes. Let's see now if it will at least turn on. So we've got the red light here. Let's see if it will go to green. Ah, it's back to red again. Oh well, it's doing the same as when I reflowed the GPU. So there's obviously bridges underneath for either that or maybe the GPU is completely fried. So you can see it's a red light there, press it, it goes to green for a second, then back to red. So uh, yeah, let me just try to press down on here just to see if it makes any difference. No, I think there's going to be shorts underneath there. Oh, well, look, it was worth a try. I haven't messed around with BGA before, and I think for the first attempt, it didn't go too bad. You know, the balls look to be okay on there. In hindsight now, those ones that look close to each other have probably bridged. That's probably the problem there. I'm not going to spend any more time on this. I I've spent ages on it. Uh, um, it's real, real disappointing because I started this yesterday, put quite a few hours in, and then I researched all last night, and then I've been changing chips and capacitors and stuff all day today, and I still didn't get to find out what the problem was. So it's not just annoying that it's broken. The annoying thing is, is that I didn't prove what the fault was. So really, it was a big waste of time. But saying that, that's what happens sometimes. I don't always fix things. So. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it is a bit of a shame, but not everything in life can be a success. And in this one here, even though I tried my best, I couldn't fix it. And that's how it goes sometimes. So big thumbs up to Ash for sending it out to me. It was definitely an interesting one. Really weird how when it worked, it seemed to have the sound and picture perfect. It wasn't pixelated or broken up or anything. It just only seemed to work one in 30 goes or just completely random. You know, sometimes once it works once, you could turn it off, it would work again, do it the third time, and then it would never come on again for another 30 or 40 goes. Really, really weird fault. Too late for this one now, but if you do know what was wrong with it, or you think you know what was wrong with it, put it down into the comments if you've experienced it before. Maybe it's uh, more common than, you know, just because there's no videos on it, it doesn't mean that it's not a common failure. So it might help other people out. Also, it might help me out in the future. Maybe as I get better, I might be able to rebore that properly. And then if I can get this to go onto the green light again permanently, then I could fault find it again in the future. As well as that, if not, I'm going to have spares to fix other PlayStation 2. So I've got another one now that I need to try and fix. And hopefully I might be able to use the disc assembly here, you know, the laser assembly, the mechanism or something to get the other one working. So although this is not working, it will hopefully go on to fix other PlayStation 2s. So massive thumbs up to Ash for sending it to me. I really appreciate that. It's... Uh if I'd got it working, I would have absolutely loved this video because it was a real head scratch. Unfortunately, that I didn't get it working, it means it's not a successful outcome. So it just makes it a little bit disappointing. And as well as that, I know viewers like it when something's working at the end because people think I've wasted their time if I've shown something that's not working. But the thing is, these are trying to fix videos, so you're going to see failures as well as successes. As well as that, I think it adds more to the video because you don't know if it's going to be a success or not. If every single video was a success, then I think it wouldn't maybe be as interesting to watch them because when you're watching them, you're wondering whether it is going to be repairable or not. But anyway, that's what I do on my channel. Pretty much every other YouTuber just shows successes. And... Uh, and that's fine, so that market's covered. So at least with my one, you know that I do show you the failures and the successes as well. So uh, yeah, uh, apologies that I, I couldn't get it working, but I really did try my very best on this one. If you got any entertainment from it at all, please still give it a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, hopefully next time I will be more successful with my next fix. Take care. Bye now.